Good. So my name is Kwame Jackson. Uh, I'm from Houston, Texas. Actually just landed at two o'clock today uh, here in Pittsburgh. Uh, it was a wild morning, but made it here. So I'm happy to be here. Uh, and thank you guys for, for coming and, and taking a look at this. I really wanted to uh, kind of get to know the audience a little bit and a little bit about what you guys are actually looking for out of, uh, out of this talk. Yeah, go. Okay. Sure. Good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> of course. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Anybody else? Good. Gotcha. How to sell yourself? Yeah. Sure. Gotcha. Well, thank you guys. And uh, I want to start off with my favorite social media mentor right now. Is anybody familiar with Gary Vaynerchuk? Well, that, that's why I brought up the idea of cur one curse word. Um, this is a very uh, light uh, piece of content for Gary Vaynerchuk, but uh, self awareness for me. Um, and, and, and Gary Vaynerchuk explains it perfectly. When it, as it relates to social media and building a brand, self-awareness is about accepting your shortcomings and accentuating your strengths. That's the most simple way that we can put it. And so I just want to play this video real quick and then I'll go into my talk. Here right now, in a second, can think of something that they're not good at, that isn't noble, that they're a bad person in, in a second that they know they haven't addressed yet with themselves. That's intriguing. That's the beginning of the process. I do well is I make everybody feel safe. And so that's really important to me because when you make people feel safe, they start telling you the truth. I really, really, really believe the thing that's holding people back is the romantic version of who they think they want to be or who they think they are versus who they actually are. Just because it's cool to be a startup founder now doesn't mean that's what you need to become. Mark put on a hoodie and a movie came out and Sorry, a little technical difficulty here. Back is the romantic version of who they think they want to be or who they think they are versus who they actually are. Just because it's cool to be a startup founder now doesn't mean that's what you need to become. Mark put on a hoodie and a movie came out and... You 
many people in here that I know intimately say they're hustlers and then I watch because I'm curious and they're just not? So you can't just say you want to let go up there because if you're gonna go there, you're gonna have to look a lot of shit in the face that you're not gonna like. If you do not have self-awareness, which is what I do think I have and I think a lot of people don't have it, the only way you can gain it is by getting other people to give you the data points. But most people won't tell you the truth. So it's on you to create an environment, a very safe environment, for somebody to tell you the truth. This is the most important question I will ever ask you in my life. You need to tell me the truth. My intuition is you're not gonna wanna tell me the truth, but you have to understand I'm okay with it. I'm in the right mind space for this. I need the truth. And then you ask them, what do they think you're good at and bad at? Of what they truly think you're good and bad at, and then gather that data. A lot of people don't want to recognize what they're good at or don't want to accept that they're bad at something. And so, I don't think people are honest with themselves. There's a lot of things I wish I was. Uh, but, but I just don't lie to myself. And I think lying to yourself has held back the far majority of this room from bigger upside. Give the video a round of applause. Okay, so the reason I shared that video is because when it comes to this space of entrepreneurship and building a personal brand, um, a lot of people try to become something that they're actually not. And in this space, that leads to a lot of depression and, and even sometimes to the extent of uh, suicide. And, and that's what I, what's my greatest fear as it relates to this industry. And, as it becomes a fad and something really, really uh, exciting to be a part of. And so I really like to shed light on the self-awareness aspect of it. And the only thing that I can genuinely teach you guys and share with some form of credibility is how to reverse engineer fulfillment as it relates to you and what makes sense for your self-awareness. And so the first question I want to ask everyone is, what is your greatest fear currently in life? Does anybody have any answers? Fear of failure. Yeah. Perfect. Anybody else? Sure. And anybody else? Cool, so the reason I ask those questions is because for me personally, I've heard a lot of success stories of entrepreneurs and, and basketball players and, and different types of actors and superstars who they made it to whatever it was that they were focused on or building towards, but when they got there, they didn't feel fulfilled. And that's because they were probably living up to some expectation that was set by someone else. In, in this space and when you start getting involved in public speaking and uh, whatever your field may be, in the beginning you may start to feel sort of like an imposter, like you're doing something that you might not necessarily have the credibility to do or credibility to express. And just so you know, the, the most valuable thing that you can actually bring to anybody is the most authentic expression of who you are. And if there's any mission that I'm on right now, it's to help people identify that within themselves so that they can then go all in on that and let the market tell them what they're worth. Now, there's some people in here with skill sets who can uh, use those skill sets to leverage and build a personal brand around. But there's one thing that I can guarantee that no one else can do and take away from you, and that's who you are. Nobody else can be you. And I don't think that we recognize that enough. And so... Does anybody actually know the likelihood of becoming a human being? Does anybody know the number? And if you, if you like heard it before, don't. Go ahead. Okay. Anybody else? So it's actually based on some data that was recently released. It's the likelihood of becoming a human being is 440 trillion to one. 
like 440 trillion to one. So honestly, I don't really care what you look like. I don't care what people think about you. I don't care what bad things you might think about yourself. You made it here out of 440 trillion other chances or possibilities that could have been here. And that makes you one of the most valuable things on this earth. And so knowing that and, and having that awareness will give you the sense of self. Like, for instance, when, when this video was messing up, it, it really didn't phase me at all because, you know, I didn't do anything on purpose. Maybe there's something wrong with the Internet. I don't know what it may be. Um, but I'm so comfortable with myself and who I am because I'm so honest at this point with myself and who I am. And I think that the most important thing in building a personal brand is knowing who you are so that you can know what to express, right? So there are a couple of people here that are doing specific things right now. And one of the questions was, well, how do I know which platform to use or how do I know which type of post? And I'm going to get into a few tactical or uh, strategic things towards the end. Uh, but I kind of want to tell you guys the power of your story. Because once again, no one else can tell your story because no one else has lived your life. I don't care what point you are in your career right now, what is going to bring about the most business, the most sales, the most uh, captivating, uh, the most transactions financially is the story of your career. If you're already at the top of your career, tell your entire story. I don't know if you've seen, for instance, uh, maybe professional athletes or, or movie stars who you may not like on a personal level. Um, and you may judge them based on what you see on social media or on, on TV and stuff like that. But then you go watch a documentary of their life and all of a sudden you have this ridiculous level of empathy towards them. You may be more inclined to buy their products and their services or support their, their um, apparel or what, what have you. The story that you tell <laughs> with how you live your life is the most valuable thing that you can offer to anybody here in the world. So with that being said, I want to tell you a little bit about my story right now. So I'm 24 years old. I turn 25 next weekend. And it may look weird that I'm going to walk around with this mic, but I just really want to walk around now. Um, is that OK with everyone? Cool. Or I could just take it out, probably. No. Test? OK. That works. So um, about four years ago, I was in undergrad. And I was studying biology at Xavier University, Louisiana, in New Orleans. And when, when I was there, I went to become a physician. That was my goal. My goal was to become a medical or practice medicine so that I can make $400,000 a year as an orthopedic surgeon. That was my goal. And something was brought to my awareness. See, what's really cool about awareness, what I really love about awareness, is that it gives you uh, permission to change. There, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of talk about uh, being a consistent person, and I get that to a certain extent, but you still should be able to change your philosophies if you learn some new information, right? We're, we're so hung up on people changing their ideas, even in politics and stuff like that. It's okay to, to take in some new information and change the way you look at the world. And so the new information that I took in was 70% of death can, can be prevented by proper nutrition and a healthy lifestyle. I was going to school to fix those problems, but then I realized you could prevent them. So that rearranged the way I was approaching my college career. So I decided to get involved in research. I went on to go to UCLA for a summer research program. And I was studying in the Mindful Awareness Research Center. If you imagine, they didn't really think inside the box too much. And over the course of three months, they effectively broke down every single belief system I had about whatever I was taught before. And I was left with almost like a clean slate is what it felt like. And from that point, when I went back to undergrad after the summer research experience, to a lot of people in my life, I was a totally different person. And I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this or, or maybe uh, you have, but when you go and start telling people about your new philosophies, people who have a very firm belief about who you are in their head, you're going to get a lot of pushback no matter how righteous or, or how even legitimately backed up your, your findings are, because your new personality or your new philosophies are so inconsistent with the expectations that they have of who you are, you're going 
to be a nuisance. You're going to create some form of trauma. Actually, it's been shown that when you directly challenge someone's belief system, it sets off the fight or flight response within their brain. You're literally challenging their identity, their sense of self. And going back to the imposter syndrome, a lot of people have been bringing it up to me a lot lately because they're like, do you, do you feel nervous up there when you're, when you're talking uh, and you know, proposing yourself as some sort of expert? Um, I'm not trying to do that. I'm just expressing myself based on <laughs> the awareness that I have of myself right now. That's what I can, that's my expertise, Kwame. That's it, right? So I went on and I started expressing these ideas to people and started telling them all these stories and I kept getting pushback, kept getting pushback. And finally, I kind of gave up. I was like, man, maybe this isn't worth it. Maybe I don't know anything. Maybe I, all of this stuff that they helped me understand when I was at UCLA didn't really actually make any sense. Maybe there was no point in that. And so, to be honest, I became, from what I could understand, severely depressed. Like, my whole sense of self was based on what I understood about myself, but I was getting no feedback from everyone else in the audience, or, which was just everyone else in my life. And that was really tough for me because at the same time, while I did really, really know that I was right about who I was, I cared a lot about their opinions, not necessarily because I think that they're right or wrong, but because I cared about them as people, right? And so I, I, was, I had no motivation to go out of my way to disrespect their philosophies or their beliefs. And so I kind of gave up, kind of went down and... and Go, going into 2015, uh, 2014 to 2015 is my senior year of college. And my awareness was changed once again by some new information. And I was sort of reinvigorated and, and decided to uh, start pursuing these ideas again. And so when I graduated from college, um, still struggling emotionally, still not exactly sure how to get out of what I was dealing with, but my passions were still true. My passions were in neuroscience. That's what I was studying at UCLA. Uh, and then the summer after UCLA, I actually got to go to Brown University to study neuroscience. And so that was my passion. Those, that's where I found my personal truths, right? And I learned two things when I was at UCLA and Brown, one at each. First thing, I was studying psychoneuroimmunology at UCLA. Has anybody ever heard of psychoneuroimmunology? Yeah, very nice. Uh, so basically what it means is how your behavior can influence your nervous system to influence your immune system and how each one of those can influence the other at any given point in time. What that let me know is that we have the power to influence everything about our lives, right? Remember I brought up the point about how it's 440 trillion to one? You literally, right now, every single person in this room have, you own the distribution rights to one of the most valuable pieces of property on the earth. Each one of you, right? And so when I recognized that, then that I can create whatever it is that I want, that was my first value. That became my first value. That became my first philosophy. Following that, which I probably should have learned, I probably should have went to Brown first because Brown told me that it's going to take time and there's going to be required graduation for people to kind of accept what you're saying. And I just wish that the universe had like realigned those and maybe sent me to Brown first so that I would have some patience after I left UCLA. But, you know, you don't get to choose everything, right? Um, and so after, after graduating, I decided to pursue, I, I called my mom before graduation. I actually almost didn't graduate. I was dealing with so much pain that I, I mean, I ended up with two C's in, in my major courses, uh, in my, the second semester of my senior year. And I had done great in academics, um, throughout my entire college career until then. Um, and so I called my mom and said, Hey, there's no actual job for what I want to do. I know, I know who I am and I know exactly what I want to express through through myself. Like, and I feel like that's the greatest value I can bring. There's, there's no amount of money I can make to serve like I could serve by just expressing myself. Right? That's how I felt. And so I told her that. I, I started DBA when I graduated. Um, however, this, the particular expectations that a lot of people still had of me were still, still lived within them. And though they said that they were supportive and that they believed in it and, and that they wanted um, you know, me to do all these things, they, they still had certain expectations of who they wanted me to be. And I still cared. <clears throat> I still cared about them on that level. And so the following year goes by, I start doing things that nobody wants me to do. I go, a year goes by, and now I'm just, I'm like all the way down. This is late 2016. I'm all the way down personally as far as like belief in like 
my relevance in the world, right? And that's rare coming from me because I, I had such a great experience the first like 20 years of my life, it felt like, where everything worked out perfectly, this and the other. And then I started diving into personal development. And I was listening to Tony Robbins one time, and, and he was talking about um, what's called, cert well, not what's called certainty, he was talking about certainty and how you create certainty when the world's not giving it to you. My personal world was not giving me certainty of the future that I wanted for my life. It wasn't. That was just the, the facts of my life at the time. And he, was t he brought up a story about Roger Bannister. Anybody familiar with Roger Bannister? So Roger Bannister was the first person to break the four-minute mile. So it was actually scientifically proven that a human being could not run under four minutes in a mile. Scientifically proven. And talk about the world being against you. <laughs> right? I thought I had it bad. Science told, told Roger Bannister that he couldn't run faster than four minutes. And Tony Robbins said, when the world's not giving, you, giving it to you, you have to go insular. You have to go in your head first. You've got to see yourself doing it before it happens. And there have been several studies uh, showing that when, when an athlete practices in their head, the same signals will fire in their body as if they're actually ha you know, taking part in the activity. And so Roger Bannister went in his head. He saw himself crossing the line at four minutes or under four minutes, under four minutes until he actually did it. Now, here's a crazy thing that happened. The following year, 30 other people broke four minutes in the mile. And now high school kids do it, you know, every single year, right? I bring that up because I want you guys to be aware of the expectations and the limitations of human expectancy, right? Be aware of those confines, right? Just because, you know, they are real. It's, it, to me, and, and I, am, I do consider myself a scientist, right? Um, and, and I value science in, in an incredible way. However, science right now is no more than a very detailed explanation of what we as humans believe is possible, right? I'll say it again. Science is no more than a detailed explanation of what we as humans believe is possible, right? We observe something which is within our perception, and then we kind of define what it means, right? Now, there's nothing wrong with that. It gives us a sense of stability and structure so that we can you know, make proper decisions. However, be careful that those things don't define your personal expectations and your personal limitations because that's where you start to fall into what I felt like I was for such a long time. Now, certainty, right? The next thing that I was really uh, looking into was the concept of acting as if. So there's a concept where in neuroscience where if you act as if, if you pretend to be, um, your brain doesn't actually know the difference between reality and imagination, right? So you can act a certain way. You can say, hey, hold on, I got to close this million dollar deal. Oh, hold on, uh, you know, Tony Robbins is actually coming on my podcast today, right? And you start to create these expectations for yourself because to be honest, guys, our brains are no more than computers. We like to give our brains a lot of credit for a lot of what they do and, and they deserve it. However, they, they either listen to us or they listen to the environment. That's it. That's all the brains do. And they spit the information back out just like a computer. And so with that being said, I was like, well, what if I just almost tricked myself into believing, um, man, I'm already there, right? What would happen physiologically? And then the final piece of the puzzle came when I was listening to Jack Canefield, who's a thought leader in the law of attraction. And Jack Canefield was talking about how these astronauts will wear these goggles. And when they put the goggles on, it flipped their visual perception upside down. And that was really interesting to me because I was like, why would they do that? Well, they were, tra they were training to be um, acclimated when they go into outer space, to be disoriented. So a lot of them, you know, they were throwing up in the very beginning because when you throw off the vision, you're going to be throwing off so much more than just that. Um, but after 25 to 30 days, they found that the astronauts could actually do everything perfectly upside down. They could walk upstairs upside down. They could shake people's hands upside down. They could... They could do everything upside down because the brains had rewired and created a new perception, a new reality for them, right? So that made me think, man, here I am. I need some certainty. The world's not giving it to me. Um, every step I take seems to kind of knock me back. So 
and I, and I can't really zone everything out unless I like kind of force it into my perception. And so I was like, what if? Because who, who here has heard of a vision board? Like where you put a bunch of pictures up of what things that you want, all right? Who here has heard of a vision video? Right. That's what was inspired through my journey, through my pain, right? Is I created a video of myself acting as if I've achieved everything that I want to achieve in the next five years and watched it every day for 30 days until that became my personal expectation of myself in, in five years, right? Now, let me tell you what happened to my certainty. Let me tell you what happened to my doubt. Because you're always going to have certainty and you're always going to have doubt. But the one that you give the most power to is the one that's going to manifest into your life. I was just, I mean, I was watching my certainty go up in the watching the decrease of the power of my doubt in my body. And it got to the point where now I'm not moved by failure in any way. Any, anything that's happening in my life is happening for me now. My, my perception is com completely changed. I'm, it's not even... My, my level of certainty is so high that I don't even feel like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get these things done. I'm going to achieve these, these uh, goals. It's just I actually don't believe it can happen any other way. Right? That's where my certainty is, right? Um, almost like when you turn a, turn a key in a guard, you, you, know, you know it's going to start. That level of certainty, right? Now, what's going to happen with that? I don't know, but I'm going to tell the story over the next five years and build a following around that over the next five years of however many people that ends up being. And that's how I'm building my personal brand. <coughs> Excuse me. That's how I'm building my personal brand based on something that, based on my story and what came out of that story. Now, I'm at a starting point in building my personal brand. I can share several tactics with you guys as, as it relates to... Um, uh, strategies and stuff like that in building your personal brand. But what I really want to help you guys get down is your story, right? Where did you start? Where was, where's enough of a starting point for you to reference to tell everybody about, right? Because, you know, uh, in, in, in uh, sales, they say they don't buy what you're selling. They buy why you sell it, right? Tell your story why you became, you said, a physical therapist, that you said, tell your story and why you, why you became that, what your journey was like, and make sure that people can see it. Go on as many podcasts as you can, and it doesn't matter how many views that, that people are getting, go on the podcast and share your story and your journey of becoming a physical therapist, right? People are going to buy into that because it's the only, you literally own the only story like that, because you're the only you, right? So um, that's that. So now, what time is it? Sorry. There for cool. So now next, we're going to go into um, a little bit of the tactical things, right? So, does anybody have any questions so far? Did all that make sense for everybody? Cool. So the first step. Now I decided to instead of just waiting five years and see what happens with. My personal, my, my, my personal vision video, I decided to start a service that I call the Manifesto Project. Does anybody know the definition of manifesto? All right, so I don't know if it's the actual definition, but it's the one I read. And it's, uh, it's your public declaration of intention, desires, and motives. Now, I referenced that definition to also reference the definition of self-awareness that was highlighted in the video I just showed you. It's the conscious awareness of your personal feelings, desires, and intentions, right? Once you have, self, once you have your personal self-awareness and you know that on a level that's unshakable, then that's the starting point for success, right? Because it, so many, the, the greatest imposters in the world, going back to the imposter syndrome, the greatest imposters in the world right now are the people who are Successful based on the expectation of someone else. That's so scary to me. Like the, the most scary thing to me is leaving the earth in the world not knowing who I actually was, right? The reason I feel so fulfilled right now at almost 25 years old and, and, and I'll be okay, I would be okay if I left the next day, right? Because I feel like I am at the most honest expression of who I am. I'm not here to preach success, guys. I'm not here to teach you that. That's not, I can give you tactics and skills to do that. 
and you can follow my journey as I build. But if I am going to give you tactics, go to Gary Vaynerchuk because Gary Vaynerchuk is the best in the game right now when it comes to strategy and building a personal brand. He's the best, right? But what I can help you do is reverse engineer fulfillment right now. Because at the end of the day, there, there's, no, there's no amount of money, there's no, there's no amount of uh, fame that can create the level of fulfillment when, when, you're, you, when you love yourself, right? And you get there by, it's not an easy process. It, it's not really that fun, honestly, uh, because in order to become who you actually are, whoever you think you are right now, honestly has to perish, right? And that's really awkward, honestly. It's a very awkward process. Um, however, it's super fulfilling. And on the opposite side of most you know, things that are tough is, is one of the most valuable experiences that you can experience. So um, that's what I do. So now I'm exp opening this up as a service and I'm calling it the Manifesto Project. And so what I do is I sit down with people and I go through an article with them. So if you guys are taking notes, um, there are going to be eight categories that I list. And it's based on an article called um, The Eight Therapeutic Lifestyle Changes. Is anybody um, aware of this article? Has anybody heard the eight, eight TLCs? All right, so the eight TLCs are based on a bunch of survey data by a psychologist named Dr. Roger Walsh. Um, and he goes through these eight categories and he expresses that as long as you're doing something related to these eight categories in your life that makes sense for you, through all your experience, through all your achievement, you'll have balance and happiness. Because the last thing that I would want to do in, in any form of coaching, in any form of helping people is set someone up and help them how to be, uh, become a, a multi-millionaire, but then not teach them anything about having quality relationships in their life and then they end up depressed. Right, or 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 even or even with health, like you know, it's it's imperative that that we that we take care of our bodies more so than even the amount of money that you make. Right. So, is everybody taking notes for the eight categories? Okay, cool. So the first one is exercise. Right. Some of these are straightforward, don't require too much thought. The other ones um, are quite thoughtful. So the first one is exercise. We all know the importance and necessity of exercise. It, it used to be that back in whatever the olden days, we used to have to actually chase down our food. That was like effectively our exercise and that was required. And that's why we were more in shape then than we are now. But now everything has become so convenient that um, we don't. And then people act like sometimes, or we, we like to act like um, exercise is an extra thing. It's literally a part of our, our nece necessary for well-being. So next is um, diet and nutrition. So once again, these two are, are quite obvious. Make sure you do as, the research that you need to do that makes sense for health in your life. Find out what that is and make it a priority, right? The next thing is time in nature, right? So spending time in nature is heavily overlooked, especially here in the United States, right? I mean, I was sitting down with one person and they said they can't remember the last time they went outside just to go outside, right? Right? There's this thing called grounding, where if you go stand outside barefoot for, I don't know, I don't know what the amount of time was, about 10 minutes or something, um, it realigns you in a way, once again, I'm not an expert on this, uh, in a way that will increase your level of balance and well-being in like just one week of doing grounding for 10 minutes a day. Just going outside and standing in the grass barefoot, right? Super powerful. Next, um, is recreation and enjoyable activities. So we all have our agendas, we all have what we want to accomplish, our, uh, you know, our self-actualization, all this stuff, but what do you do outside of your agenda? Right? What do you do to keep, get your mind off of everything? I like to um, drink beer with my friends. Right? I like to go to the movies, I like to uh, play different games and stuff like that. Things that just kind of make you forget about everything for a while. Um, because you need to create that balance if you want to be as effective in expressing yourself as you want to, especially when building a personal brand. When it comes to building a personal brand, you have to be consistent. You have to be consistent. And if something throws you off your rocker because you're not doing enough enjoyable activities and you just feel like you're all work, 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 and then you leave the field for three weeks, your community that you're now responsible for is going to be like, where'd you go? Right? Right? You need to make sure that you're doing something fun, right? Uh, next is relationships, right? So with relationships, this one to me is extremely important. 
because relationships are like the lifeblood of the universe, if you ask me. I mean, this would be a really a pointless talk if like nobody was sitting here, right? Other people really do matter, right? And as far as making your life worth living. And so there are four categories when it comes to, rel to relationships. The first one is family. So what relationships do you have with your family? Which ones do you want to have with your family? Next is friends. Who are your ride or die friends? Friends that, I call them your flat tire friends, where if at 3 a.m. in the morning you catch a flat, you know that you can call them and they'll be there for you. You need those people in your life, right? Next um, is your, your uh, significant relationship, whatever you want your partner to be, right? Um, and then finally is yourself. And this is a big one that's heavily overlooked. Uh, and, and, I, and it really was brought to my attention. And it actually wasn't a part of my, uh, my service until I was doing yoga about a month ago. And we were doing it like on the front yard of, of the, off, the, the co-working space that I work out of. And the instructor, her name was Peta, And we were, all, we were all laying on our backs and we were stretching our knees out. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, she's like, now kiss your knee and say I love you. That was really weird to me. I'd, I'd never heard, like, say I love you. I'd never said I love you to myself. I never thought, even thought to say that. Or who is myself separate from me? What does that even mean? Right? And, but then when I did it, like, it sent, like, just a rush of, like, good feeling <laughs> through my entire body. Right? So now I do it every night. Like, kiss my knee. Nobody sees now. Um, but it's, it's a super important part. Like, these little things over time really do matter. Right? And I can't, I can't state this as fact, but follow my story and, and let's see, right? Um, next is relaxation and stress management, right? So we all live in America. It's like ridiculously stressful here. We have so many expectations. I remember when I was a junior in college, no, senior, first semester, senior year, I was taking 18 hours. Uh, I was doing 20 hours a week of research. Um, I was applying to graduate school. Uh, I was running cross country traveling pretty much every weekend, and I had a full-time girlfriend, right? So I had a lot going on, and I was more stressed than I ever could imagine myself to be, right? So I really started to develop like high levels of empathy as it related to people who drink four cups of coffee every single day, take Adderall at night to stay focused on their work, and then drink heavily every single weekend to let it all go. I get it. But those probably aren't the best ways to you know, deal with your stress. So here are a few things that we like to highlight is meditation, yoga, reading. The way I like to put it is anything that requires you to focus intensely on one thing. This could even be video games for you. I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever played like Call of Duty on, um, on, a, on the internet, but you literally feel like you're in that world. Like you're, like you're, you're there and that's it. And so anything that requires you to focus immensely on one thing to just decrease that mind chatter in the back of your head, right? So next is religious and spiritual involvement. Now, this one, you know, I'm not, I'm not in, any, in any way a, a spiritual teacher or anything like that. Just find out what you believe in, what makes sense for you, and what makes you the best human being for the rest of everybody here. That's it. That's, that's my two cents on that. Um, you, but I do really feel like you do need to have something that you believe in something that grounds you in, in, in your expression. So the final one is your contribution and service, right? Why are you here? What do, we, like, what do we need you for? And this is my favorite part because if there's, any, if there's a mission of mine right now, it's to extract that out of every, as many people as I can. Because if we, I mentioned before, like, we are the most valuable pieces of real estate on the earth right now. And there's something in each one of us. Les Brown used to say that, the wealthiest place on the earth is the cemetery because that's where ideas go to die, right? Books never written. Like, I don't want that to happen. As much as I'm afraid for it to happen in my life, I'm afraid for it to happen in everybody else's life because I don't know what you guys have that could be of value to the rest of the world, right? So, contribution and service. So what we do is we go through that and then we identify where they are right now, right? Gary Vaynerchuk said, um, Self-awareness is accepting your shortcomings and accentuating your strengths, right? This whole idea of having to be good at pretty much everything that, that you're a part of is, is causing a lot of pain for a lot of people. LeBron James did not care about science class. He didn't. I don't, he probably actually didn't even have to go. He was so good, right? Um, but we, 
look up to him as a model of greatness, right? The people that were the greatest did not focus on trying to make their strengths, make their weaknesses strengths. I know that's a quote by Michael Jordan, um, but I don't actually believe, I think he focused on his strength. That's why he was a professional basketball player, right? Now, um, yeah. 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 Oh, it, it does. And, and the way where I put it is contribution and service slash career. Because in, in a lot of cases, people's careers are a form of service and it's what they feel like the best thing that they can do for people. So career slash career. So success and achievement. So I, yeah, no problem. So, um, so in the video, what we do is we we identify where people are right now or where they used to be and, and what they're not happy with about whatever their life, whatever's going on in their life. So let's say, for instance, man, I, I, I really only work out like three, two or three times a day, right? Or a day, two, two or three times a week. I'd like to exercise five times a week, right? And so um, what we would do is we, we'd help them be okay with that like, and recognize that it's okay not to be okay. And then we'd set a goal for what they want it to be in the next two to five years. Right, and so we do that for each category, and then once that happens, it really gets fun because who here is familiar with virtual reality? Right, so there's a camera called the Insta360, and what I decided to do with the Manifesto project was, I am the host of a talk show called Manifesto, right, and after we go through the self-awareness workshop and go through all these categories, I sit down with them and I interview them as someone relevant two to three to five year, whatever timeline they want from now. And I interview them and I ask them questions related to what they want to achieve. And they tell me about the present as if it's the past. And they tell me about the future as if it's the present, right? And we put a date on it of you know 2020 or whatever we want it to be. Um, and this is my way of creating a, a kind of the, the right expectations for whatever it is you want to have in your life. So, um, Let's see. That, that, okay, so that's it for that part. Now, as far as strategies go, what I want to do with, with the strategy part in building a personal brand is play a video really quickly from, I don't know how many times this is going to say a bad word. Because my, my strategy is very simple. My strategy is find out who you are and then tell everybody who you are. Does that make sense? Find out who you are and then tell as many people as often as possible who that is. And is that going to be in, in the form of a blog? Some people like to read, so put out a blog. Is that going to be in a podcast? Some people like to listen, so put out a podcast and convert it into a blog too so that your, your uh, readers can, can, can read, right? Um, let's see. Here it is. It baffles me how many people think that they're bigger than they actually are. I hear people say like, well, how do I get in the New York Times? Or, or how do I get that meeting with that CEO? And I, oftentimes I just say one is better than zero. the steps it takes to actually get to the biggest places in the world. Before you get a meeting with, you know, Zucks or, or Cuban or Barry Diller or whoever you're trying to have a meeting with in the business world, well, you've got to have a lot of little meetings to, to build up your cadence. People are always like, man, you've been on Conan and, and Ellen and, and the Today Show and CNN and Fox. Like, how do I get that? And I'm like, well, I also did a thousand interviews, it feels like, on videos that got one or 19 or 137 views. Like my PR people and all my managers and handlers are really pissed at me because they're like, why are we spending 15 minutes doing these blogs that have six readers, you know, every single day and you're passing on the stuff that we're giving you to be on CNN or New York Times? I still, even today, am 
as happy and sometimes even more excited to be on a podcast or a video blog that's only gonna reach 100 people because I'm always about depth versus width. Do you wanna go wide or do you wanna go deep? I want to go deeper with my community. I want to give back to people that were fans of me. And so even today, where I have more leverage than I did three or four or five, six years ago to get bigger platforms, I still live under the motto of one is better than zero. To me, doing these interviews is a process of the work that so many people are impatient and not willing to do. Are you willing to take 10 minutes to get 195 views? I am. I don't know who you think you are. You've not gotten the exposure yet. When you have not made your name just yet, when you're still making the climb, when you're not paying attention, because nobody else is, because 217 people are watching the video, I'm grinding when you're sleeping. I did those 87s and 59s and 137s and 813 views day in and day out, day in and day out, day in and day out, and continue to. You might make a video on somebody's video show that has 89 viewers, but one of those 89 viewers may be a producer at CNN or, or might be the CFO of a big company that you're trying to reach. And so undervaluing just that one view needs to be the right view, but it's one view is a humongous mistake. It's about having the humility. It's about not saying no, even when you've made it. And the one is greater than zero concept is something I'm proud that I continue to execute on. Does that make sense, everybody? So now, at, at this point, what I want to do is open it up for question and answer. So I do have a lot more information in my head that could probably be valuable in this session. So. I really want everybody to ask whatever questions that you have. We probably have like five or 10 minutes. I don't know when they're going to kick us out. Um, but go ahead and ask away. Yeah. How does you personally acknowledging or are you sharing it? Yeah. Sure. Um, has anybody ever seen that uh, scene from Eight Mile? Has anybody seen the movie Eight Mile with Eminem? All right. So in the last scene, He's, um, he's you know, battle rapping this guy. And, and what he does is he basically says everything that's terrible about himself to the other guy before he says it, right? When you put all of your crap, right, out for everyone to see and own it, right? Psychologically, all we can do is look for ways to look at you in a valuable way. I don't exactly know the wiring and why it happens that way, but when you put yourself essentially on blast, right, in order for other people to get a sense of value and, and a sense of worth from themselves, they have to, well, well, no, you know, it's not that big a deal. You know, you're not that bad a person, right? So it's, it's I mean, it's really ROI positive to, to put yourself out there like that and, and kind of show where you're struggling uh, in life because it also gives people the opportunity to relate because everybody's going through stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so the question was, how do you uh, find out what your, your greatest contribution is uh, if you're not sure about what that is right now? Um, the question I first asked people is, what would you do if you didn't need, if you didn't need money? Right? What would be the first thing you do if you, if you didn't um, need, to find, need to pay bills or whatever? And the overwhelming majority of people will say, I would go help other people. Like, I would go serve or something like that, right? And that's great, and I, and I really like that. But the next question I asked was, what if everybody else was taken care of? What if everybody was in the, in the world was taken care of, and then what would you do? And people get stumped because they've actually never been asked the question, right? And so the thing that I like to bring up is, what's your favorite way to help other people? Or like, what's your favorite thing to do? What's, what's the best way that you bring value to other people? Are you funny? Do they like, like you, and do, do you make them laugh? Um, do you, do you like to help people gain perspective? Perspective is powerful. It's, perspective is actually the only thing that can change the results and change the experience without changing any of the facts, right? If, for instance, I told everyone today that maybe didn't know that the likelihood of becoming a human being is 440 trillion to one. That's been a fact, but I'm, I experienced life differently ever since I knew that, right? No, no, no facts changed. Right, but my perception changed and it changed the way I operate and experience life. Um, so maybe that's your service. Just ask yourself, what are you most passionate about as it relates to serving other people? 
or or what what um what are you best at as it relates to that? And and just ask yourself that question. The funny thing is when you start asking yourself questions, even like before you go to sleep, your brain will like come up with them. Like it'll tell you. It knows the answer. So next question. Yeah, go ahead. Right. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, if you, if you are, that, and that's the idea based on the article. Uh, the question was, how do you avoid the burnout? Um, make sure, first, make sure that you, you know who you are and you're doing things that are expression of you, right? If you're doing things that you don't want to do, you're going to burn out quick, right? And, that, and that's oftentimes some of the, 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 one of the best ways to recognize uh, that that's not who you are. Um, but secondly, just recognize that you're the one saying yes to all the opportunities and all the, the talks and everything. When you say yes to things and you have to bend your back to get there, that was your decision. I mean, <laughs> no, nobody, uh, I mean, Bob Proctor, he said that, um, that it was his fault that he was overweight because he's never accidentally eaten anything. You know, like, <laughs> it's all on him. So that's, that's, that's that. Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So the question was, once your whole audience knows your whole story, what do you say now? Well, now they're sold on you. And once you have an audience that's sold on you, you can, they value your perspective. They value anything that you have to offer. So for instance, I have a little blog that I'm going to put together. I'll probably do it in, in an audio rant first, but um, since I've been in entrepreneurship, I've gotten a lot of pushback um, from people thinking that it's crazy that I stay up till 4 a.m. working on stuff or, or continue to go to seminars that they're saying the same thing and, uh, you know, not eating certain times because I forget to do it during the day or whatever. But then I remember back when I went to college where I spent, you know, about 20 to 40 hours a week either in class or studying, stayed up till 3 a.m. ridiculously, take, drinking coffee, taking Adderall, all these different things. Right, but nobody was saying anything then. Right, so I'll share that thought and that idea, and that might get shared to somebody, and then that might be worth money to an advertising company once it's shared enough to that audience. Makes sense. But once you become valuable to someone, right? Essentially, once you get people what they want, they want what you have to give. Right. So that's all. Is that we need to wrap up? No, we're good. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? I have a question. <laughs> um, what, what were some of you guys' biggest takeaways from, from the talk today? Good. For sure. Anybody else? Say that again. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's it. And now some people will oftentimes say, so what he said was that you have a commercial value as an individual. Like, you know, there's, you are in control of the distribution of you. Right. And now that we have social platforms, everybody can do it. And now not, everybody's not entitled to Bec like becoming a personal brand and making millions is like becoming a superstar in anything else, right? This is it's the same thing. Now, the amount of people that are going to be able to get paid now for being themselves compared to before is a, is a lot higher because there's no cost of entry. Or you don't have to pay for Facebook. You don't have to pay for WordPress. You know, I mean, you can but if you want better access or whatever. Um, but you don't have to, right? So a lot more people who didn't get the chance to go to Hollywood or didn't get the chance to do a lot of other things because they're, either their parents didn't have the money or they weren't in the right location, will now get that opportunity to at least have a chance and, and see, if, see if they're worth it. Go ahead. Yeah, that's my fit. Yeah, right. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. 
Oh, oh, I was, I was starting to talk. Yeah. Oh no, yeah. So, so yeah, kissing. Like, that's my best advice for anybody. I'm telling you. Like, if you guys knew how much your cells listen to your thoughts, you would never say anything bad to yourself again. Like they, they're so loyal to your thoughts that um, has anybody ever seen the, the the rice experiment? The thought rice experiment. If you haven't, look it up on YouTube. Um, I think just put rice experiment, uh, and they have three cups of rice with a little bit of water in it, and they put um, I hate you on one of them. They put I love you on another one, and then they put like nothing on the middle one. And every day for 30 days, the, the guy goes in and he says, I love you to the love you cup. He says, um, I hate you to the I hate you cup. And then he um, doesn't say anything. He just ignores uh, the, the middle cup. And after a while, like you start to recognize how each one of them is changing as it relates to our thoughts. Like the, the one that said, I love you to, based on what we feel about I love you means, was looking in a more of a positive manner, right? The one that said, I hate you was not looking too pretty. But the one in the middle, which was really intriguing to me, was the most disgusting looking one, right? The one that was ignored, right? Because even when you express hate towards someone, you actually do care because you're, showing, you're giving them attention and your energy, right? And there's at least some value there. But ign ignorance, like ignoring someone, that's why it's when in building a personal brand, um, the most important thing is engagement, right? When you do start, when you put your expression out there, you're like, man, I just put out a real good piece of content. Like, that's actually when it starts, right? Because people are going to start to respond and start to say things. And you need to consistently provide value and also make your audience feel good about who they are in the process of that, right? And that, that's the work, though. I'm telling you, relationships are the hardest work in the world. That's why not everybody gets, is going to make this, right? But everybody gets a chance. And I personally think that, um, you know, let's, let's say, for instance, that you don't, you don't have enough for the market to want to buy you on a consistent basis, right? Let's say you're not cool enough, you're not funny enough, you're not smart enough or whatever it is based on the, what the market wants. Um, I still believe that you can actually make it, right? If you're connected with the right person, let's say there's someone that, um, for instance, uh, if you're just like one girl that I sat down with during my man the manifesto project, she said that she just wants to be a representation of unconditional love. Like she doesn't want to, build anything for her contribution and service. She just wants to represent unconditional love. What if she represents unconditional love to like one of the wealthiest people in her circle? Do you think she's going to struggle financially? No, but because this is the thing. The most attractive thing on any person is authenticity, a genuine expression of who they are. Somebody, I'm telling you, somebody will see value in it. I promise. Yeah. I had another thought. I forgot it though. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. 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 Those, those are perfect. I mean, because the thing about fo focusing on your strengths and, and, um, and kind of delegating your weaknesses to other people whose those are their strengths, you serve them and give them the opportunity to be as great as they can be while you also can <laughs> let your mind... I mean, who here, for instance, me personally, I really don't like dollars. Like, I just don't like handling them. Like, it's just something weird. I don't know. Pet peeve, whatever it may be. All right. It literally takes energy out of me to <laughs> really like do things when it comes to money. But I have a friend who like loves money. He loves it. Like it's his favorite thing in the world. And I don't get it, but I don't care. Like that seems to be serving him. So I'm like, hey, friend that I like and trust, why don't you manage my money so I can just focus all my energy on what I, the actual value that I can bring? You know, because I, I heard a quote one day that said, um, don't let talent and skill take you to a place that your character can't keep you, right? Anybody ever heard that before? Super powerful quote, right? Um, and, and I like it to a certain extent because what I found was that I have some personal value that I can bring right now based on my experience so far, right? But I, I suck at managing money in a way that like I might do something wrong with it, but that shouldn't take me out of being able to express what I am right now in the value that I can actually bring. So let me make a self-awareness decision to 
delegate that to someone else. That doesn't mean I can't five years from now figure it out. But for right now, I think the best thing, you know, speed is, speed is the winner here, guys. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. And that only makes sense. Yeah. 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 And see, this thing, you know it's right. You know it's right. And, but the other people's expectations may be telling you that it's not. Um, but you do may have to sacrifice something to be able to go all in on your strengths. But I'm telling you, the fulfillment that you get is worth, it's worth more than the money. Good. Yeah, good. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. You can you can do it. I mean there are a couple ways you can do it. You can either if you do if you do have a bunch of value in, in this original brand and, and people are really valuing that, maybe you can tell your story within that one. That would be a way to do it. Or start to you know, compartmentalize it, start a new brand, but then say, hey, guys, this is some really interesting information that you might want to take a look at. I read about it. Right? You're putting your own self on right, without them actually knowing that it's you. Does that answer your question? All right. All right. Do we need to wrap up? OK, cool. No problem. All right, thank you, guys. That's all I have. Uh, I'll be around like tomorrow and today, so later.